Best hunter weapon? I get this question a lot and I'm not actually sure why. Surely if you wanted to play the best of the best you wouldn't even be on hunter. Not to say that it isn't a good class but I'll try to give a satisfactory answer without letting my obvious bias cloud my judgement. Generally speaking, all three weapons are all rounders. <laughs> and I wish I could fucking leave it there as it would free up a lot of time in my schedule to do nothing in particular but hey, they do have some nuances to them in the same way that different brands of orange juice have nuance to their taste. Really though, due to their all rounder nature, it is technically possible to main one specific weapon. But I personally wouldn't recommend it as you just end up limiting your options. Even pulling out the wide lance to scratch your back is utility and worth having them for. Sword of. The poster boy of the game and it fucking shows. The most all roundery of these all roundery weapons. Sword combines simple wide single target, simple AoE with simple high damage gap closing that have a clean core gameplay loop that has no particular trouble with anything and makes it the best hunter weapon at hit and run gameplay in things like AQs and mining base. It also has blaze parry and blaze parry is the equivalent of bringing a chainsaw to a butter scoping competition. That is to say, fucking mental. This makes it the strongest counter weapon in the game a lot of the time by a potential landslide and among the decent quality of life Sword has versus a lot of other weapons in the game, it makes it a top 5 weapon even factoring the yet unreleased in NA advanced classes. Partisan. It sucks. Wild Lance. It also sucks. Oh, bear luck next time. Really anticlimactic innit? Well, alright, to be fair I did answer the question of what is the best hunter weapon, even if it isn't the one I main and in fact I think I hate it for what it stands for being developer bias and all that but ultimately it doesn't matter. This is a full on class game and every weapon slash class have their own mini games within the game that you need to deal with, meaning that synergy with you is what's most important. And even though I joke, bitter about my favourite weapon having glaring weaknesses that make it a potential draw to play, every weapon in this game can be overpowered and it's just context that is important. Partisan may have the highest sustained burst, sounds like an oxymoron I know, of all the melee weapons in the game and Wild Dance has absolutely nonsensical AoE damage to the point where it can almost double up on a single target at times but it's not in NA yet because no crafting. Incidentally, there are guys with sword and pods that will give you way better answers and I really don't think a TLDR will do them justice. If you want to know which to play and don't particularly care about tiers or anything like that, then you can just look up videos on YouTube and pick the one that looks the coolest. What subclass should I- Fighter. Just, just use Fighter. The subclass system in this game isn't nearly as open as you'd like to think and due to most multipliers being specific to melee damage, range damage or techniques or elements, incompatibility is everywhere. It also doesn't help that a lot of the good shit on most trees is main class only and or apply to the weapon which makes subs like Braver and Bouncer really shitty due to their low stance multipliers. Now I don't pay anybody sub, even if it's a free to play game, and this game is generally as threatening as a baby harp seal that is asleep on the other side of bulletproof glass, so as much as I really don't recommend it, you can do whatever you want. Just note that skill trees cost real money to fix most of the time aside from all skill tree reset passes that Sega decide to give out after balance patches or if they just feel like it. PS if you happen to be a JP player then the answer for you is it what, but you have to get 275 to unlock that anyway so you might as well start with Hunter and Fighter. Also, what in the fuck are you doing here? You should already know everything about this game, including the sound director's sister's dog's favourite alcohol. Does guard stance reduce all damage? Unfortunately, the descriptions in the skill simulator and in the NA version aren't very specific, so a lot of people have been under the misconception that guard stance reduces all damage by 75%. In the JP version, even in the Arc Slayer translation, it specifies striking defence. But if you don't believe me, you can test this yourself. In the options, there is a setting that you can enable that allows you to see what type of damage you're taking based on the colour of the reduction of your HP. A reddish orange is melee damage, blue is range damage, and yellow is technique damage. Mag actions. Mags are basically glorified stat distributors, but they can potentially come with their own neat effects. Given that your mag should be 200 mil, the only thing you may want to change is the photon blast itself, since everything else should be fine. You can buy a new photon blast for 8 X cubes at the X cube shop. You want to grab either Julius Nifter for excellent mobbing utility, or Ketus Prore for excellent PP region. As for the generic trigger mag actions, unless you're a super min maxer, these are extremely minor, so I'll hold off on talking about them for now. Skill rings. To not date this video too much, I think I'll refrain from weapons and units, otherwise I'd have to make a new one every couple of weeks for NA, where gear such as weapons and units are in a really transient state, not unlike a shy ghost. But skill rings on the other hand tend to last longer, in fact, skill rings are basically permanent. Hunter focus preservation is your main and is necessary for all weapons. Unfortunately, despite your character having 5 fingers, yeah I'm aware this game has suffered from crap hand syndrome, you only get one slot for a left ling, left ling, left ring, 
and one slot for a right ring. However, with the power of 12 star units, you can get extra left wing per unit you have. Oh, and for you blokes currently in NA. <laughs> okay, fine. When this game is actually completed, I recommend putting your level 20 Hunter Focus Preservation onto a unit, as once this is done, you can copy it onto any other skill ring compatible unit you get. As for the other Hunter rings, Alternate Wild Mode is wank, don't get it. However, the counter ones aren't even that bad. Now, at level 1, they cost 20 PP to use, so upon a Just Guard, you'll send out the relevant PA at a cost of 20 PP. However, if you have the skill from the skill tree, Hunter Perfect Guard PP game, you'll get 20 PP back, meaning it's plus minus zero. So from level 2 onwards, you gain PP for a PA. At level 20, you gain 20 PP for a PA that's even stronger than the regular version. So these aren't necessarily a bad idea. However, if you have to choose between rings, most times you'd want Hunter Focus Preservation. The exception may be Sword when you're in like a bossing situation where you won't be running out of gear anyway. It's up to you. With a counter ring for each weapon type, getting them all to level 20 allows you to combine them, which makes them into one ring, which has the same effect that all three at level 20. This is what you ideally want to aim for. So when NA is actually complete, and in episode 4 comes out with the Partisan Just Squad ring, combining all three into the full counter ring will allow you to have one ring and then whichever weapon you're using, it'll give you the counter effect. I do not recommend putting counter rings into your units as when it's combined, you can just keep it on your ring slot and then put other utility rings on the unit slot, such as Atomizer Fanatic, the super quality of life ring that makes you invincible while using Soul, Moon and Star Atomizers while speeding up the animation greatly. Leveling it up only increases the effect, which I personally recommend, but it isn't a big deal. You can just slot into your ring at level one. At this point, you have three skill rings, Hunter Focus Preservation, a relevant counter ring, and atomizer lovers. Nothing else is really mandatory, so I will include a link to the Arcs Visiphone website, which is a repository for all the skill rings in the game, and you can make a choice of left ring to put in the final unit slot, since only left rings work for units. I personally use Leaping Dodge to help with Hunter's air fighty problems, but you can just as well take perfect recovery blast for some extra damage when you get knocked down. Our rings at the moment are kind of not great. So I'll also cop out by telling you to choose whichever one you please by using the ARC's Visiphone website while indirectly implying which one you should use by giving it as my own opinion, which is basically PP conversion for some extra PP maintenance. Augmenting Priority To say augmenting is a difficult system to get into would be the same as saying that the moon crashing into the earth would be difficult to survive. So instead of explaining how, I will just tell you that Hunter's pretty comfy in terms of defensive ability and Partisan craves PP more than your mum so prioritizing melee power, then PP, then HP, then everything else, would be prudent. But here I go telling you how to play the game again, so this is a personal decision. There's this dude named Pigeon Knife who created a pretty good at fixing guide which covers, you know, hidden mechanics, much like all of them, so you can refer to that for how to do it. This isn't, again, not an exhaustive list, and even though this is supposed to be a part of a playlist for a guide to become a pro hunter, this is more like a frequently asked question answer session. That being said, if you do have any questions, uh, refrain from asking because you're going to be breaking rule number one, but give it a try anyway. If you don't try, you never get a response. The next video should be based on gameplay type stuff. Frequently asked questions like, how do I block? And heard, uh, what's a game? So please look forward to it.